all, all of this is very enlightening. I mean, it almost sounds like the French strategy at sea. I mean, was, I mean, uh, I will, I'm going to embarrass myself and try to translate it. Um, it's almost like in my head, uh, uh, petit guerre oui, de mer. Exactly. <laughs> oui, um, of course. Uh, the idea of um, um, uh, a naval guerrilla, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, a petite guerre, it's very uh, important. In fact, it, the French strategy was looking like a naval guerrilla in the Caribbean because mm -hmm. they had a small craft and, uh, and things like that. In the, in the Atlantic Ocean, it's not that because uh, to have a dissymmetric warfare, to have a dissymmetric warfare, you have to, go, to have dissymmetric means, and it's not the case, uh, except, uh, except again in the Caribbean. Uh, in the Atlantic, the French use frigates, uh, ship of la the line. So the, the, the only thing, but it's uh, very important, is that they avoided combat, but they had the same means. So you cannot tell, you cannot, um, uh, you cannot stress it as a petite guerre, but in the Caribbean, it's very true. Okay, interesting, and, and I'm glad I, I'm glad I got that right. Anyway, uh, also, I mean, what you were saying about the Brest fleet. Um, I mean, many people lay great stress on British combat victories, and I'm just sort of chatting here. We'll get on to the other questions in a moment, um, but they had to continually blockade France yeah. during the Napoleonic Wars yeah. because the threat of yeah. the French fleet was still there. Yeah, and um, that in itself is is something of a success. Uh, in fact, it's very complicated. Of course, the um, one thing about this is the blockade of Brest did not start as a close and continuous blockade mm -hmm. until 1800. It's very mm -hmm. important because uh, people, when they think about this period, even in France, they think about the Napoleonic Wars. And the mm -hmm. Napoleonic Wars, yes, the, the French ports were blockaded. It was a very good strategy. I am telling you as uh, someone who uh, reads the... I don't know if, if there is a debate about the... To this day, is there a debate about the, uh, in the um, this choice of strategy to blockade? I can tell you from a French point of view, it was good. <laughs> because <laughs> I... Uh, I, when I read the French sources uh, from 1800 on, it, 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 it's a nightmare. Of course, mm -hmm. what you said is very true. Of course, it, it has cost. It, uh, it is very difficult to keep at sea all this time. But the, it was a very good, uh, very good strategy because the, the British fleet hardened herself. So, but in front of Brest from 1795 to 1800. 1800 is good, eh? 1800. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but there is no close blockade uh, before this date. So most of the Revolutionary War is without blockade. Of course, it's John, it's John Jervis, uh, the whole of St. Vincent. Uh, of course, I, I'm a Unitarian, uh, but you, your, viewers, your viewers know perhaps bet, better than me, but St. Vincent is very important. Um, I've, read, uh, I've uh, read this uh, excellent book, the, um, the remaking of the British fleet by uh, St. Vincent, which is a bit exaggerated, uh, but is excellent. Of course, St. Yeah. Vincent is, uh, I don't know, Saint Vincent, <laughs> is, is, uh, is um, as important as Nelson, perhaps more important. I, I, I agree, to be honest, I think. It, because the long-range strategy that defeated France at sea was not necessarily the big battles, although that demonstrated that the British would likely win yeah. in, a, in a battle of and course. therefore dissuade the French from doing things that are too risky. But I think it's important to note that the reason they had to blockade the, the ports mm -hmm. was, to, was, I mean, it's simple, literally, to stop the French getting out and, and just doing what they were doing before and avoiding the big battles and attacking where the British fleet is not. Uh, so that's very interesting. Have it, now, having talked about French naval strategy uh, during the revolution, who are the, you, know, we, you have mentioned some of their names already, but uh, who are the key figures of, of, of the French Navy at this point? Um, who, who, are the, who are the leaders and organizers and people like that that we should, we should know about? 
uh, of course, uh, um, there is uh, some names that are more important than others. Of course, as it's uh, the French Revolution, some of them are civilians because uh, it's very important. The, one of the people I, I like uh, much is uh, Jean Bon Saint André. It's a funny name, uh, even in French. Also. Uh, because his, uh, his first name uh, is... Uh, Jean Bon Ham? Yes, yes. <laughs> his name is, sounds like Ham in French, but it's not Ham. <laughs> in French, it's funny too. Um, not important. He was, um, he was in fact, um, he was the man in charge of the Navy in the Committee of Public Safety. So he was very important. He... Uh, he he created a, a stimulus about, around the Navy. Uh, it's a guy uh, very interesting because he had a, a strange history. He was, in fact, a Protestant pastor uh, before, getting, uh, before uh, being a sailor. He was not an officer at all, but he, he succeeded in creating a momentum in the, in the French port of Brest in 1794. That's one person. And, of course, uh, you've got the admirals, the admirals which are important. Um, they are not well known even if in France because they have not won any battle, but they have held the ground. And uh, some of them, of course, have, uh, and I'm getting to the second part, have won successes. Uh, I'm thinking of Villaret Joyeuse, Villaret Joyeuse, uh, Amiral Nieli, l'amiral, il y a l'amiral Van Stabel, etc. etc. Uh, what fair. Uh, what were their main features? Of course, I have not uh, dug up any battle uh, tremendously won by the French, of course, but uh, much to my disappointment. But, <laughs> but of course, what uh, one feature is uh, it's important because it's about the indirect strategy is the what we call the light squadrons. I think it exists in the, in the, the British Navy too. What are they for the French? It's, uh, if it's the same thing for the British, I, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You take 74s. 74s, as you know, they are the, uh, the ship of battle, uh, the most common, the most, uh, the, uh, they sail very fast, especially the French ones. And uh, because, why? Because in the, as I said very earlier on, in, before the revolution, they have, there is a, a work of standardization uh, to, a, to an absurd point in the French Navy. To tell you, they, at, at the moment, they, ten, they try to give each mast the same height. So it's uh, very, uh, we, are, uh, we are very strong at standardization in France. Sometimes it's a bit absurd, but uh, I'm talking about nowadays France. Man. Let's skip that. Um, so, uh, of course, so why it is uh, why it is, it is important? Because the light squadrons of the French Navy, all 74s, all built, all the same. So no one's lagging behind. They are very fast. Uh, when did they strike? Of course, uh, no, it's when I think, I hope so. Uh, I hope that it is uh, myself who has uh, seen it. I don't think, I don't think I've seen seen any work in English or French about it, maybe I'm mistaken. So it begins in 1793. 1793, the main, uh, the, main, um, the main fleet goes to protect the Vendée. They meet with the fleet of Ho. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's very unclear. Uh, did Ho refuse to attack? I don't know. The French uh, sources are quite bizarre about that, but no battle. And everyone goes to its port. The French, na the, the French main battle navy goes into a kind of mut mutiny, uh, mutiny, but a, a very strange mutiny because it's a mutiny for the Republic. The, the, the sailors want to get back to Brest to protect Brest from uh, getting the same fate as Toulon. So it's, uh, it's not uh, because I'm telling this because sometimes in, in in some British stories, it's not, it's quite unclear. It's not at all a um, uh, mutiny against the Republic. It's uh, mutiny in favor mm -hmm. of the Republic. Okay, so that's the, main, that's the main campaign. And after that, in September, October, six, uh, six um, ship of lines get out of Brest, all 74s, and they, they commence to track uh, uh, British merchants, British, uh, British uh, loaners, uh, things like that. 
it's not uh, they, they catch some uh, of them but it's not uh, it's not that much and then they fall in with the british navy so a bad uh, bad moment for them but they they uh, they escape they escape and the british are quite amazed because of course these six uh, these six uh, standardized the uh, french 74s they, they say very very fast we are in 1793 the crews are bad the discipline is bad so it could have uh, ring a bell in the, in the British that the things could get worse. Uh, next, uh, next campaign, 1794, uh, you know it, glorious 1st of June, uh, strategic French victory, in my opinion, defeat of the French, uh, defeat of the French uh, battleships, six uh, battleships, seven battleships lost by the, the superior British uh, fleet. Okay, but same thing. Uh, quietly in September, October, of course, in the French, uh, in the French Revolutionary calendar, it's it's Brumaire, Vendémiaire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I quite like these names. I important. do too, to be honest. Actually, they're quite nice. <laughs> they have a ring. They have a ring. Uh, yeah. Uh, the this this uh, this light squadron goes out again, and this time it's much more important. They catch several merchantmen. They score. They catch a frigate. They catch a man of war. They catch uh, um, a ship of a line. Um, uh, in the uh, in the early days of October, I don't know, I don't remember his name. It's the uh, or it's not important. They they fall in with two uh, ships of a line. One is one uh, British. One escapes. The other gets caught. So it's quite a tremendous success. Uh, it, of course, in the light in the light of British success, it's nothing. But in the 18th in the 18th century, to take a British uh, uh, a British ship of the line is quite uh, a thing. So it's very important because the French scholars say uh, uh, constantly, "Oh, the, the Revolutionary Navy was bad." Uh, I disagree because this taking of a French ship of of a British ship of the line did not uh, happen, for example, in the Seven Years' War. And 1795, 1795, it goes on because this time the light squadron gets from Brest to Toulon and then Toulon back in the Atlantic Ocean. And then this time it takes the, the British convoy of the Levant, uh, of, um, I don't know, of, uh, you know, Syria, uh, Syria, this, this convoy. Escorted by, two, uh, escorted by two men of war, two ships of the line, one is taken. It's the um, uh, it's the censor which was taken by the it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a British prize of a French 74 who falls back again in the French in French hands. So and then this squadron is commanded maybe you know his name by Richery, l'amiral Richery. Uh -huh. And that's uh, uh, of course an important officer because then he gets into Cadiz and then he, uh, and then he, gets, he goes on uh, raiding. Um, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Uh, so, uh, of course, this, uh, this, I'm telling this, this is completely unknown in France. I, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not, uh, of course, it, it, it's very normal that the British uh, did not stress this point because, of course, <laughs> it's, uh, even in the 19th century, today, of course, if they, if they, if they, if they, if they had the, the sources, they would, they would uh, stress it. Um, but, um, but it's also unknown in France, uh, it, it, um, so uh, it's quite new, uh, of course. So, um, and then Richery, after going to a Newfoundland, gets back to Brest, and then he participates into the, um, uh, the uh, failed attempt to uh, to, uh, to take uh, Ireland in 1796. So that's um, why it is important. Uh, the strategic impact is slim, it exists, but it's not very important. But wh why it is important, it's because the indirect strategy, the strategy of avoiding battle, unless you are in a, a very, uh, the, the match is very in your favor, and raiding, uh, raiding um, pillaging um, unprotected, uh, unprotected British places, pillaging, of course, the merchantmen, it was not as stupid as Mahan and others would say. That's of course my point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've not, I, I admit I, I haven't heard of those specific instances before. I always assume that 
French ships must have taken British ships, but it's not very well known, the specific instances. Like in, in the War of 1812 with America, yeah. the, they, they go on on and on and on and yeah, on about yeah. all, of the, all of the British ships they took. Yeah. But you don't hear that side of the single ship actions or smaller ship actions where the French win. win. Well, in fact, uh, almost all single ship section went to the British. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially for the frigates, the frigates it's a massacre, uh, um, and they, it's very int interesting to understand why. But um, what uh, these uh, these actions of the light uh, the light squadron, uh, of course, it's uh, um, it's not a fleet battle, but it's not a single ship action because there is six or seven uh, uh, ship of the line on the French side, and the 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 point is to get an overwhelming uh, power mm -hmm. because. Uh, they know that uh, in uh, in single ship duel they, they would uh, lose. So it's not a, it's a, it's a good. No, it's 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 very it's very intelligent. It it makes perfect sense because another reason why this this petit guerre works yeah. well mm -hmm. is is because the French do know that they can't really beat the Royal yeah. Navy yeah. in action. So what do you do? Yeah. Obviously, fight when you have overwhelming superiority, and the rest of the time try and try and, you know, let them catch you if they can. Yeah, and, that, <laughs> and the point is, uh, um, uh, it's, um, it's based on one of the, 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 of the assets of the French Navy, which is not really its speed again, not really its speed, because the, the, there is British, British, uh, British um, ships which, are, which sail faster than the French, but the uniformity, the standardization, because they, the French 74s sail fast, but again, they sail uniformly fast and that's uh, that's the point mm -hmm. uh, very interesting there um yeah, on, on the on the on the subject of sort of battle tactics uh, i'm aware that um the the british well the, there's the idea that the british like to fire into the hull yeah. uh, and the french like to fire up at the masks yeah uh, yeah What's what so what's the difference in battle tactics? Is there so, what's the reality sort of thing? I uh, I know this uh, topic. If I, I know this, this kind, maybe it's, it's even a cliche. Uh, in France, uh, most scholars think uh, the same. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> of course, it's, I'm paid to disagree with uh, <laughs> the previous uh, the previous historian. I think the point is, you do not fire on the hull or on the masts. Uh, uh, on theory, there is, a, there is a strategic and a tactical uh, context. Why do the French sometimes uh, fire to the mass? Because they are chased, of course. So mm -hmm. the, strategic, the strategic crushes the tactic. It, the, the, it's the strategy that defines the tactic. This is very, very important. Of course, it's my opinion. Everyone can disagree. But I think that when when Cornwallis, when Cornwallis is chased by the Brit uh, French fleet in 1795, uh, uh, it's called Cornwallis Retreat. I think some of you viewers know it because it's quite famous. He, has, he, manage, he manages to escape uh, uh, a French fleet. Uh, where, did he fight? where did he fire? Not on the hull, on the masts of the French because he wanted to escape. And when the French want to escape, uh, they fire to the mast. So the strategic situation cannot be forgotten when you talk about tactics but what about the what about the the, the, the fleet actions where the, there is almost an equal match i do not think that the french uh, fired on the on the mass that much i have a report very interesting about the battle of the first of june in french it's called la bataille de prairial because it's the, it's the month of the revolutionary calendar because, uh, as you know, it was uh, so far away from the land that you, you don't have a name. So in, French, in English, glorious first of June. In French, it's the, the name of a revolutionary calendar month. So what did Villares uh, says? He, he says that uh, he says that uh, he ordered to fight to fire on the masts. Why? Because he wanted to avoid a, a prolonged fight. Um, because he what well, all, all he wanted was to get his convoy, but uh, he says very explicitly, if 
the strategic situation had been different, he would have said to fire to the hole. So it's not, um, there is no manual, there is no, uh, there is no school of, uh, of cannon firing in France where you say fire high. It's not, it's not like this. So it's very important because, of course, well, it's one of the things you, people keep repeating, oh, the French, uh, in France, I'm thinking, you see, the French, we were so bad, uh, I'm faking a French accent, we were so bad, uh, we, were, we were firing to the mast, uh, it's not good. Uh, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit more complicated, I think. Very interesting as well. Uh, that, again, makes perfect sense. That it's much more to do with. I, I would. I personally agree. I'm persuaded by the logic, to be honest, because because <laughs> because you know when when you talk about tactics and stuff, a lot of people forget the reason the tactic exists. Yeah. Uh, and as you're saying, the context. So, for, I mean, for the French to just blindly follow, oh, we must always fire for the masts, would mean they're all brain dead, essentially. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and that is just not the case. That's not, not the case. But of course, British uh, cannon fire was superior to the French. There's no debate in that. No problem about that. The, the problem is, uh, to, what you said, to think that there is no reflection or thing. Of course, there is. Mm -hmm. So having talked about the tactics, which is a, a very another thing one hears a lot about in in, in discussions about the French, the, the Royal Navy, um, what do we what do we think? What do you, and again, you you've sort of touched on this in the conversation so far with the, when talking about strategy, uh, and indeed the 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 key the key names of the French Navy. But specifically speaking, what do you feel the triumphs of the Republican Navy were, and 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 like. Uh, why did defeats like the Nile happen? Well, the, the defeat of the Nile, it's very interesting. Abukir. Because, uh, I, uh, <laughs> yes, Abukir of the Nile. It's, uh, it's very important, and I think uh, I will uh, again uh, ride my, the same horse. I will talk about strategy. For me, it's very mm. important. Why did, uh, did Abukir uh, uh, happen, uh, the Nile? Because the uh, strategy of uh, uh, Egypt expedition was flowed from the beginning. Of course, I'm not stating Nelson has no merit. Of course, you know, single encore, uh, they, they, they managed to, uh, maybe some, uh, some, some of your viewers don't know, so I, I will explain very fast. Um, the British managed to get between the coastline and the French, uh, and the French fleet because they, 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 understand, they understood they were uh, moored with just one anchor, so they had to have space. It's a very clever tactic by Nelson, very good decision to attack immediately. If he had not taken this uh, decision, it would have been very uh, much more difficult. But let's take a larger scope. The problem why the Nile happened, because it was flawed from the beginning. You don't, you do not attempt to, uh, to displace huge army when you do not have control of the sea. Why did the, the, the expedition to Ireland was better? Why? Because the expedition to Ireland, the, 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 the sea officers said, we drop you and then we, uh, we go back to Brest very fast. So, of course, it was uh, dangerous, but at least it was very clear. We, we make a travel and when we flee, <laughs> so it has no, no, no other name. But the, the, the Mediterranean campaign was ambiguous and that this ambiguity that destroyed the French Navy. Uh, Napoleon said, I will, you, take me to, to, you take me to Egypt. Your work is not to destroy the British fleet. It is just to, just to take me to Egypt. But if that was the point, the French fleet should have sailed back straight to, to France, just like in the island. So what killed the French Navy? Of course, Nelson, of course, the British uh, cannon fire, no problem, of, of course. But the first thing that killed the French, uh, the French Navy in the Mediterranean was the strategic mistake to hesitate between command of the sea and indirect strategy. They should have just, if the point was just to get Napoleon to Egypt, then they should have just sailed back 
instantly. But Napoleon, who was a not a very good strategist, uh, he was a good strategist, he was an excellent tactician, but he was not that mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. ex exceptional. He, he did not have uh, the, the sense to say uh, the British must, must be near us, uh, just go back to France quickly. And uh, as you know, you know it, your viewers know it, but I will uh, repeat it. It was a miracle for the French Navy to get to Egypt. Nelson was there. Uh, in fact, you know the story, but I, I'll tell you again. It was because the French fleet was too slow that uh, uh, Nelson did not catch it. it. If Nelson had caught the, the French Navy, the French fleet, uh, before the disembarkment, it would have been... Uh, a uh, catastrophe of, of unknown, of unknown uh, uh, size. Mm -hmm. So the, it's the strategic, the flawed strategic thinking was the first and foremost uh, defect of the Nile uh, battle. Of course, of course. And, th and as the theme running through this, and that makes total sense, and it displays Napoleon's weaknesses as, as a strategist to think that we don't have command of the sea, and yet I'm going to invade this place, which requires a great outlay of, of, of and commitment of the French Navy. Just, just one thing about that. It's important to understand that Napoleon in 1795, uh, Napoleon, ne, uh, he's not yet uh, Bonaparte. Uh, fin, fin. <laughs> yeah. it's, the, uh, it's the reverse. He, he is Bonaparte. Mm -hmm. He's not Napoleon. He's not uh, Emperor. He's not, uh, and, one of the one of the cause what I will try to show in my PhD is that the directory, you know, the, the directory, uh, the, um, it fall for one of the reason of its fall is the incapacity of the directory to balance between navy and army. Because do not think that the navy was happy about getting Napoleon to, to Egypt. Of course, they said, they said, uh, if, the, if the British catch us, it will be a slaughter. Uh, we do not want to do that. Uh, of course, there was much contempt of uh, the Navy by the army. And it's not only Napoleon. Osh, Osh, the, the general who wanted to invade the island. Osh, um, of course, because he died early, uh, he is not, uh, he is not, um, the French Republic, the, the left, even the left, uh, the historians of the left say, "Osh, good guy, uh, not uh, like Napoleon." But himself, he was not a saint. And when he got to, when he gets, when he gets to Brest in 1796, he despises the, the navy. And if he had been much more conciliant, I don't know if uh, this word exists, um, he would have been better. The first thing he says is, oh, uh, uh, this French sailor, they keep surrendering. <laughs> uh, le, le, we have, if we fight on the sea with the Navy, we, we will shot the first sailor who wants to uh, surrender. Of course, how can you cooperate in this kind of, of, of sentiment? It's impossible. So the, the historians of the French army have said, of course, the historians, I'm not talking about the sources, the historians have said, have taken the side of the army, have said, oh, these sailors, uh, they, they, they kept uh, holding back our great generals. It's not true. It is not true. But uh, again, we, you will not find one book of French history who says what I'm saying. I, I, I think, you know, maybe I'm... Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you've got no book in defense of, uh, of, uh, of the French uh, Navy against uh, the... Against Napoleon a bit, against Osh, nobody. Well, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to, um, you know, what, what you're doing anyway. I probably won't be able to read it, but, <laughs> uh, but it sounds like you're, you're, you're breaking some ground there, definitely, because, um, yeah, I mean, even it, 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 it leaks, it, it, um, it soaks into English sources as well. You know, English histories will pick up on the disdain that French historians give to the yeah. Navy, and they will accept it, essentially, yeah. because they, they, they're already thinking the French Navy is lesser than the Royal Navy, yeah. so it makes because sense. Of, yeah, the, the British historian, of course, they, they quote the French generals thinking, oh, they are outside the Navy, so they must be... Uh, they, they must be uh, uh, objective. Yes, they must be objective, but they are not, because 
uh, they are in conflict, in direct conflict of authority, of authority between uh, the, um, the, these two sides of the armed forces. And what is very important uh, in general history, not in uh, only in military history, I think, but if the directory had said you are uh, equals, you you do not have to uh, to despise the navy. Would the 18 Brumaire, the Napoleon Bonaparte coup d'état happen? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe if the director, I think one of the ingredients of the um, destruction of the French Republic by Bonapartism is this inability to, to say uh, you are the armed forces, you are equal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely so. So uh, we're coming to the end of our, uh, our questions. Um, but right, so you must be aware of the famous novels uh, yep. series of novels and stuff in Brit in English uh, by C.S. Forrester and Patrick yep. O'Brien, Hornblower and Jack Aubrey, and things like that. I mean, what do you think of British fiction at sea? And is there a French... Uh, is there any no are there any French novels about... Not of these levels, but there are. But, well, uh, to tell you the truth, I am a huge fan of uh, Patrick O'Brien. Uh, I would not be an historian of the French Navy, uh, if he, if I had not read his books, uh, Jack Aubrey and uh, Stephen Maturin, uh, they are. Uh, 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 and uh, I hope to connect with your viewers on this point. Uh, mm -hmm. They're my friends. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I've read. Oh, yeah, you may think uh, I, I say this to brag, but it's not the case. I've read seven of eight times each of the, of the, of the books. I would not be, I would not, I wouldn't, my life would not be my life if I, without these books. It's extraordinary, excellent, excellent in the, in the picture of the British, of course, of the, of the global, uh, of the globalized state of the world, because he was in advance with historiography, because uh, historians uh, talk of Atlantic war, global war, but he was still, he was showing this, Patrick O'Brien, he was showing this before, uh, when he was writing his, his novels. So it's excellent. One, one um, very important thing is his treatment of the French Navy, which is almost French biased. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's, um, he, uh, he talks about the battle of Algeciras, 1801, which is one of the very few uh, French victory in a, in a battle fleet, a small battle fleet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's depicted uh, very clearly, and uh, it's very rare. He does not tell about Trafalgar, does not tell about uh, the Nile. We, we know that Jacobri was yeah, he the Nile. references the Nile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and the French, in fact, it's almost French bias because during the Napoleonic Wars, really the French Navy was in a very bad state. It would have been uh, more uh, to the point to the, if it was about the Revolutionary Navy. So for a French reader, it's uh, very uh, pleasant because it's, it's remarkable, it's remarkable. And the, there is absolutely, I think you, I, I would like to know your opinion, but there is absolutely no anti-French bias in these, uh, in these books. Uh, I love them. Um, they're, they're my favorite novels. They, they're the best historical novels ever written. Right. Uh, and uh, this is from a guy who is not a sailor, who doesn't understand a lot of naval terminology and stuff like that, and who concentrates mostly on the British Army yeah. uh, and Wellington and stuff like that. Yeah. But no, they're, they're brilliant, and I agree. I mean, Patrick O'Brien was a was a great linguist. He he spent yeah. a lot of time in France. Yeah, uh, he, he lived, uh, he's buried he's buried in France. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, indeed, yeah. Uh, and so uh, and that comes across uh, as well in his treatment of um, the enemy uh, in in this book. It's very clear that Jack Aubrey fights because it's his job. He doesn't necessarily dislike the French. Um, and Stephen Maturin, who it, he he he's a Republican. Yeah. He doesn't like Napoleon. <laughs> yeah. He hates Napoleon. Hey. Well, Stephen Maturin, uh, Maturin, when we um, mm. when I was young, this this character has a, had a huge impact uh, on me because 
I, he's so much things. He's uh, Irish, he's Catalan. Uh, I'm, I'm myself of Spanish origin, so it's a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a Republican. Of course, uh, he, has, uh, he despises uh, Napoleon. It's, it's excellent. It's really, uh, the, the, it's perfect because it does not, it, it depicts the, 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 the complexity of the things. Uh, and even, and uh, I'm sure you agree, Jack Aubrey is not a caricature, not at all. No. He, he's very, uh, he has this movement, he, he has these moments of, uh, uh, if he's feeling low, uh, he jokes about the French, saying uh, you've, got to, uh, you've got to fight the French, but at the same time, he, he, he would love to speak French, big thing, and it's very, really good. The problem is, it is so good, that uh, I tend to dislike the others. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. Uh, when uh, I tried to lay, uh, in fact, I would like to have read uh, read uh, Forrester before. I've tried uh, to read Forrester after Patrick O'Brien, and I found it difficult because it's it, there is a in this time there is a, an anti-French bias a bit tiring. Not not that much, but a bit. Uh, sufficiently to get uh, to to be a bit annoying, and uh, it's it's less oh, it's, it's very correct. It, it's a good a good. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite good. But when you have read these books, which are striking uh, with uh, with novel uh, things, but uh, it's it's also books of history. The everything is depicted. The, um, I have a, I have, a, I have a participated in a podcast, uh, a French podcast I could send you about the, these uh, novels. The, everything is true. Uh, the, the, the link to science, this way of classificating things, it's very 18th century. Mm. Uh, the problem of nationality, the problem of religion. The, I don't know what it is in Britain, but I think the way it treats the Irish question uh, it's striking because uh, to some, uh, some uh, maybe a bit jingoistic British uh, readers, it could be a, a it says a thing. So it's uh, it's um, it's very uh, it's uh, it's <laughs> yeah it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you run out of words, and, and yeah. It, yeah. Uh, even the, in the, reading in English, I'm so picky about my fic what fiction I read now. Because of Patrick O'Brien. Of course. <laughs> yeah, completely. Completely. Uh, because, uh, and uh, in French, we have, um, we have uh, one uh, novelist about the French Revolution. It's called uh, Fabien Clot. I will send you the, the references. Fabien Clot, Pour les Trois Couleurs, for the three, for the three, uh, the three colors. Uh, it's quite good. It's very good. It's very good. But... Uh, yeah, it has not the the, uh, the envergure of, uh, <laughs> of, of uh, but I will show you uh, one other thing. It's a uh, uh, comic. Uh, I don't know if you um, I don't know if you um, if you have comics about uh, the, the the British Navy. It's uh, by a man called uh, Pellerin, and it's about a privateer. Uh, in the 18th century, it's not about the French Revolution. I, I will send you the. I will send you the references. It's called Les Perviers, uh, which is a, a not an eagle, uh, kind of a, uh, another kind of bird. It's remarkable, remarkable. Um, it not it does not deal with uh, French. Uh, it does not deal with Franco-English war. It's a uh, it's a privateer, but in time of peace, <laughs> who uh, who uh, he is uh, caught in a judiciary problem uh, with the French uh, authorities. It's excellent. Oh, well, excellent! I mean, I don't, I don't actually know of any comics about uh, the navy in Britain. I actually think the idea of graphic novels and comics and stuff is probably stronger in France. Actually, I think. Well, I mean, uh, I you call it graphic novel, not comics. It's it, not, uh, it, much... it, it depends. It yeah. depends. Yeah. Okay. But I think I think we would probably call that a graphic novel, but it is a comic. It's yeah. <laughs> as well. Good. I I I did not know, so I, I tapped on my translator to to, to, to get the, the right word. Maybe a mistake. <laughs> it's it's completely fine. It's just it it depends on the author because graphic novel sounds grander. So yeah, you yeah. can you can yeah. you can sell it for more money. <laughs> okay. 
uh, to like to grown ups and things, you know. Um, so that's that's great. Nice, always nice to meet another Patrick O'Brien fan. Um, so as we end up, I mean, I, I kind of want to ask you about the privateers and Le Corsair, uh, but because they do play a part in in the French Navy, I don't know if you want to say anything about them. I want to, I can say a thing because I think it's important. During the French Revolutionary Wars, the privateering was forbidden from 1793 to 1795. So uh, <laughs> most people do not know about it uh, in France and uh, I think in Britain too. And why is it very important? You remember I told you there was a strategy of command of the sea at this time. So, of course, the pieces of the puzzle uh, get together because the French authorities wanted to man their, uh, their crews to fight directly the British fleet, so they forbid uh, the privateers. Of course, it's kind of uh, bizarre to think uh, the French pr from, uh, forbid uh, priv uh, privateering, but it happened. And then, of course, the turning point is as for the strategy, 1795, and at this time, of course, it's uh, open the gates. <laughs> uh, the private privateering is encouraged, and it's quite. Um, and of course, the the uh, what to what to say of it? What is the the, the bilan? Uh, what is uh, was it wrong or what is doing good or or wrong? Um, it's very complicated. I think that it was. Not that much of a failure. Much, most of the most of the privateers were taken by the British uh, frigates or, uh, or even ship of the lines. Uh, thousands and thousands of uh, French sailors were taken take, take, uh, to the um, to the to Britain. But was it uh, um, a failure? I don't think so because if you think about 1801 and 1803, when the war uh, begins again in 1803. Uh, France has taken back all of its sailors uh, because they have been liberate, liberated at the end of the war. Does it make a difference? This different uh, the, France getting back its sailors, does it make a difference? No. The, the, Fr the French are still in port, they are still blockaded. So I don't think it was a mistake because these sailors, of course, they were missing, but as the French fleet at this time could not get out, I don't think they were. They were. It was a, such a loss. So, I again, of course, because the historiography has switched. Has switched at, uh, during the 1950s, the 60s, all everybody would say privateering, uh, superb. It's a French way of war. Uh, we beat the English. No, <laughs> uh, and then in. Uh, in the 90s, uh, uh, the reverse, but to be absurd, uh, the privateering was bad. It was not working. It, it, uh, so I'm I'm thinking to maybe reset the case, uh, reset the case in a more balanced way. I think there was bad, but it was not that uh, strategically. It was not um, a bad decision. I think to unleash uh, the privateer. Mm. It makes sense. I mean, everybody did it as well. I mean, privateering was yeah. just what you did in war. Uh, in the 18th century, when you go to war, you say, come, come, have the private men of war can go and do whatever they want. It's just what, what they did. Yeah. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. And it was probably, probably, probably helped in some way, definitely. And obviously, you get famous people like Robert Sokouf and, and people yeah. like that uh, yeah. doing a lot of swashbuckling and things. But um, so that I, th I thought we should briefly just mention them anyway, because obviously they're a big part yeah. of the conversation. Um, finally, then, um, Olivier, are there any sort of first-hand account, first-hand accounts of the French Navy that we can we can read? What would you recommend people read? You know? Yeah, you, there is uh, there is some um, the not by some by officers. Um, some by privateers, of course, because they, they, had, they tended to, uh, to write their memoirs. And uh, one, uh, there is not much in the, um, you can buy in, a, in your bookstore. 
the, the most you can find them uh, for for free uh, on the French national uh, digitized uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, library. So uh, I'm thinking of Landolf, Captain Landolf, who is a privateer in 1793, based in the United States. Who, and he strikes the English, uh, the English um, uh, merchants from the United States. And it's very interesting because he's taken in this turmoil of the Caribbean. Uh, he has a black and white uh, crew. So there is problems of uh, racial tensions, but also it's quite working quite well with uh, uh, patriotism binding them all together. Of course, it's no uh, dreamland. Eh? Of course, he, there is problem, there are problems. Uh, and then he gets, like many of his counterparts from privateer, he gets to the French Navy as an officer. He gets to command a frigate, and he, he's an example of this indirect strategy because he's, he keeps raiding uh, British uh, merchantmen, but uh, he does not fight one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one fight uh, against frigates or, or things like that. In 1799. He said, in 1799, uh, you have his most um, successful campaign. He's sent to Africa. He is sent to Africa. He takes uh, Principe, uh, Principe from the Portuguese, and it's very interesting because uh, you have uh, you have um, a kind of negotiation about slavery because slavery is still abolished in France, and uh, Landolf says uh, to the Portuguese. You can give me your wealth, your your uh, your gold, or things like that, or else I will abolish slavery in your island. So you know, it's interesting because, of course, uh, it's very evocative because, of course, it's not about being good or bad. Uh, it's um, uh, of course in the French Navy there were people who were really against uh, slavery, but there was also this kind of negotiations which are very top, uh, typical, typical of these times. And uh, it's, uh, you can find it, I will send you the reference if you want, uh, for free uh, mm -hmm. on the internet. And it's, uh, of course, uh, it's in a French, uh, uh, a bit old, but very uh, understandable. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because it's not a great officer, a great admiral, it's something from, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds very interesting. I mean, I, I We'll have to improve my French to be able to read it, I think. But nevertheless, I would very much like to uh, offer it to um, to uh, viewers who can yeah. read French now. And I would obviously like to have a note of it so I can <laughs> I can find it. Uh, so please do uh, send me any of the links that you want yeah. to me to put in the description box, and uh, I'll I'll put it there, and we will uh, people can interact with them at will. So. That's that. That is the end of the questions. I mean, uh, we could. I, it's it's been it's been it's been really wonderful to talk to you and listen to 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 these uh, to your just to everything that uh, that you've been saying. But thank you, thank you again. It's been a real pleasure, a real pleasure. I hope uh, it's the last time I, I mention it, but I hope uh, my English is understandable, and. Um, Re thank you, and uh, I'm. Uh, I will do a, a bit of self uh, self uh, publicity. Uh, I'm on Twitter, and I really I would be glad to exchange with English speaking uh, person who have an interest in this uh, period because uh, there are very few French people who are interested in the Navy. So I've got to to just search elsewhere. Uh, I've. Uh, well, I, I would. It would be really a pleasure to exchange uh, on the internet, or I hope some something mm. in uh, in France or in Britain. Absolutely, absolutely. It would be very nice to actually meet you face to face sometime. Um, right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk with uh, Olivier Aranda about the about the French Navy. Um, if you liked the video please like the video, uh, please subscribe, and uh, please follow Olivier on Twitter and um, talk to him about the Navy because 
the poor guy needs needs to needs to talk about the <laughs> needs to talk to somebody about this. Uh, there's lots of people uh, I follow on Twitter and who follow me. I'm sure who would very much be interested in what you do, and I will I will tell them privately to go and to go and talk to you, and I will uh, encourage them. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hereafter, uh, but th thank you again for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions for Olivier, please leave them in the comments uh, below, and I will I will tell him about them, and maybe we we should be able to get you an answer. Uh, so, but for now, we we must bid you adieu. We must we must go uh, because well, it's, 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 we've we've done all the questions. So. Um, I will leave you with my, my usual encouraging thought, uh, which is uh, to, to have courage and have compassion and uh, Godspeed. And we will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much. Okay. And